My name is Mike. I'm an alcoholic. I'm going to do this old school. I've been through the process with a big book, step study sponsor, meetings like these, people like you, a God of my understanding, making amends and practicing steps 10, 11, and 12 on a daily basis. Um, Dave, thanks for asking me today. I appreciate it. It's great to see this meeting back up to, to full steam, hitting on all cylinders. Um, it's been a long couple of years for everybody, and I, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you all here today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does anybody in this room not know how to drink? <laughs> I'm going to skip that part then. Resentment, number one offender. Really? I thought it was drinking. So when I get into AA, and, and hopefully I, I stop drinking right away, and things get a little better right away, right? We're given some tools, at least I was right away, and I try to make sure that, that people coming into AA get these tools right away. Um, and we get some in this chapter, some really important ones, some really, really strong ones. So the, you know, I think <clears throat> this is going to be all over this morning, I can tell. I think the most important tool that, that I got in AA was the one I got the very first day, and that's to appeal to a power greater than myself to do for me what I couldn't do myself. And that's the, the foundation of the program of AA, its main object, right? This book, the instructions, is to get me to that, that higher power. Um, and so in, in that process, I, I get to hear now. In step three, running up to this, I make a decision, right? That's all I do in step three. I decide that, geez, you know what? My way didn't work so well. Maybe I'll try something different. I don't think anybody hits these rooms at the top of their game. I was a flaming wreck when I came in, and I think a lot of people might be able to identify with that. However far down you go, I mean, you're, you're here. That's what counts. Um, yeah, I got a sponsor early in this, in this program. The people that I hung around with, they were really good AAs. It was out in the Brookfields area. They had done the work out of the book. It wasn't step study, but they knew the book. They knew the program really well. I was blessed to be put in touch with these people, and they told me to get a sponsor right away. You know, it wasn't very long. I, a, a couple of months, maybe that, that magic 90-day thing. I don't know. I don't know where that came from. And I sit down with the sponsor, and we decide that oh, I, I realize that I am really an alcoholic. You know, we go over my history, and, you know, what makes me an alcoholic? When I start drinking, I have no control over how much I drink. And when I'm not drinking, I'm thinking about it all the time. And, and we reviewed my history, and you know what? <laughs> I belong here. And so we, we start with this, this fourth step, and resentment being the number one offender. It destroys more alcoholics than anything else. And I thought it was the drinking. From it for stem all forms of spiritual disease. What is spiritual disease? To me, spiritual disease is things like hate, envy, sloth, laziness, resentment, right? Lies, lies, spiritually sick lies. And really, these resentments, I think, are couched in lies. I get these resentments without, without a solution, without a God in my life. I get these resentments at the drop of a pin. I, I, I just, the only reason I had a lot of resentments, the only reason I didn't have more, I didn't know as many people. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I had spiritual disease, and I was very angry. And, and hurt and lonely. And I didn't know why. And just, you know, the drinking worked for a long time to help with that. And I felt okay till you get to a point where it doesn't work anymore. And, and, and now I'm, I'm angrier than ever. I'm resentful. And I'm drinking at things and at people. And my world gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And it's, a, it, it's, it's, it's horrible. From it stem all forms of spiritual disease. <clears throat> So we get the directions. And that's the beauty of this the program, right? There are clear-cut directions. They tell us earlier on in the book, we're going to give you the directions to show how we recovered from a hopeless condition of mind and body. And we're going to start doing that here. You know, I've made my decision in step three that my way didn't do it. I'm going to try something else, and now I start here. 
And the directions are, are very straightforward. And my sponsor gave them to me, I followed them. You know, I make a list of, of who I'm angry at. And it was a big list for me. I was an angry guy. I got resentful over everything. If you didn't do what I thought you should do, if you didn't act the way you thought, I thought you should act, uh, I, got, I got angry at you. And it, it stayed that way. I had resentments that were, oh my goodness, from when I was seven years old. That sounds insane. And, and the truth is, that is insane. That's, that's really crazy. Um, and so I followed the directions. You know, I, I listed the, the people, institutions, and principles that I was angry with. And that was easy. And that was fun for me. Because I'm going to sit down, I'm going to read about all, I'm going to say it, all you bastards that had done me wrong, right? And so I, I sit down with this pen and paper, and I start writing, and I'm going 70 minutes writing this list of names. And I had to stop because I couldn't hold the pen anymore. My hand was so cramped. I had no idea that I was so angry. I had all this anger bottled up in me and I would drink at it to help tamp it down. To help tamp it down. Um, it's, it's, it's lies. These resentments are lies. Tremendous lies. Lies I tell myself so I can live. I, I guess, you know, on our grudge list, we set opposite each name our injuries, right? I, I, I'm going to ask myself why we're angry. So now I've got this list of people I'm angry at. Let me just do the mechanics of this real quick. I list this people I'm angry at, and I'm going to say why. And I'm still loving this now, right? Because they're, she's a nut. She snubbed me. I better not ever run into Mrs. Jones because I got something to tell her. <laughs> But that's, that's how, how they are, you know. He looked at me funny one time. Uh, beat me in a bad drug deal. And I just, like, just angry at these people, you know. Looked at me at work. Didn't do what I would. Took my pen. I don't know. It doesn't matter. I'm pissed and I'm angry. And I'm walking around like that all the time. And the anger and the lies are running my life. And nothing ever makes... Did anybody ever see the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Remember Riff Raff? So if you hadn't seen it, Riff Raff's this character, and he's kind, of a, he's kind of a degenerate bum in the beginning of the movie. He's, mis- he's disheveled, unkempt, he's with a bottle, all sloppy, and it's just a mess. At the end of the movie, there's a, a total transformation, and Riff Raff becomes the leader, and he's resplendent in this armor, and he's, he's taking control of the scene. And it's the high moment for him in the movie. He's like the ruler now. And he, he, he kills one of the people. And his, his, his friend goes, why did you kill him? He, he liked you. I thought you liked them. And he goes, they didn't like me. They never liked me. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I get it. Because that's the lie I tell myself. That I'm not good enough. That you don't like me. That if you found out the truth, you wouldn't like me. Uh, I can't do anything right. And, and, and then this is just all spinning up in my head. And if I get resentful at you, it's just going to stay that way. Once you're on the list, that's it. You're on the list. <laughs> so if you come to, to AA with a, with a drinking problem, if you're an alcoholic like I certainly am, and you, you stop drinking right away, and I was given one of those important tools, I was given the most powerful tool... Uh, day one, when I came into to Alcoholics Anonymous, I didn't realize it at the time. That tool being to ask a power greater than myself to take that obsession away, to lift that. And, and you know, I did that right away since day one. And that, that is the most powerful tool we have. And it, it worked for me. I didn't realize it at the time. It took some years to, to re-get that. But... What happened is that the, the grace of God entered my life in that moment and the obsession to drink was lifted. That was my experience. That's my truth. Your mileage may vary. But now I'm still telling myself all these lies. So you've taken away the drink. If you sober up a horse thief, what do you get? Sober horse thief, right? So I'm still a horse thief. I'm still angry and resentful. But now... I'm really in trouble because I don't have alcohol to calm that down anymore. I'm just on my own and I'm just 
angry and confused. Early sobriety, I remember like being the seven dwarfs. I'm dopey, happy, sad, <laughs> sneezy, crying, laughing. In the, in the span of, of minutes, I'm, I'm uncontrollable. I'm all over the place, much like this morning. Um, but it was just chaotic. And, and without a solution, I don't know how long that would have been sustainable to just not drink. My experience was that I, I got a sponsor and started working these steps right away and got some immediate relief right away. Um, I've seen what happens when people do not do that, when they choose for whatever reason, just to try to struggle it out on their own with, without, a, without a real solution. Um, sometimes just going to meetings isn't enough. I don't think it would have been enough for me because I still had a whole head full of lies. So if I'm not drinking, I have all this whole head full of lies. My life is, is just, it's, it's really now the pressure cooker's getting turned up, right? More and more every day, because I don't know how to deal with anything without a drink. I never learned how to cope with anything, because I just poured it and could cope. So I'm a, I'm a hot mess during the day, all day, everywhere, but at least at the end of the day, I can tell myself the lies, right? Pour a couple of drinks and lie, and it's okay. And, and then I just sit and I stew about those resentments. I don't just have them once and let them go. I take them out and I pet them and I water them and I take care of them. And if, 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 if you're there, I'm going to try to rally you to my side and we're passing out torches and pitchforks. And we're going to get the villagers and go because that's what I want. And it's, it's just the lies. It's, it's lies. And that's where in this we get one of maybe the most second powerful tool that AA has to offer. And I say that without hyperbole. I believe this to be true, the most important thing. And it comes to us right when we're starting doing this. We don't have to wait till step 12 for this. This comes right away. Resentment's infinitely grave, fatal. Going to kill me, dead. What do you do? Though we did not like their symptoms. So these are the people. that We realize the people who wronged us, wronged us. That's really generous, isn't it? Let me rephrase that. We realize the people who were acting just as they're supposed to act <laughs> were perhaps spiritually sick. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Doesn't matter for what we're doing here, right? Though we did not like their symptoms, right? If you're irritating me, I don't like what you're doing. Whatever that is, that's the symptom we have here. And I don't like it. You better stop. <laughs> and the way these disturbed us, I get aggravated. Yeah, what are you doing? They, like ourselves, were sick people. Maybe. Maybe not. Can I give them the benefit of the doubt? We ask God to help us show them the same tolerance, pity, and patience that we would cheerfully grant a sick friend. When a person offended, and that happened a lot, if you looked at me wrong, said something wrong, we said to ourselves, this is a sick man. How can I be helpful to him? And here's the beauty part right here. God saved me from being angry. Huge. Huge. Amazing, powerful tool. Thy will be done. I know if you're sitting there, Maybe you haven't started this work. Maybe it's your first meeting. If it is, welcome. And, and I know I was sitting out there and I'm thinking, how can this even work? How can this be possible? I just want to stop drinking. The truth is, once I stop drinking, I'm just still the horse thief. And unless I get some kind of other real solution going, who wants to be around a horse thief, right? You got to watch your horse all the time. You just can't trust them. But I had fun doing the list and writing why I was so pissed at all these people. And then I get to get into it a little more deeply. They talk about this in the, you know, the third column. It affects my, you know, it affects, affects everything. My self-esteem. I just, I'm, I'm afraid of what you think of me. I have no control of what you think of me. Some people like me, some people don't. I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I get that now. Before, I wanted everybody to like me. And if not, at least do what I said. <laughs> Um, acceptance has, has been huge. Acceptance 
is another one of those tools. Just amazing. You know, I, I, I sit here and I go, these are, are, are amazing, powerful tools given by God. And if, if you haven't had any experience with it, like I was sitting out there, it's easy to say, it sounds like a lot of bullshit, quite honestly. The truth is for me, on that first night, when I, the next morning, when I asked a God that I had no understanding of, I had no idea what I was doing, I was looking over my shoulder. I'm living alone. I'm looking over my shoulder to make sure nobody's seeing me. And I just asked for, the, for that to be removed, the desire, the obsession to drink, to be removed. And it worked. It worked. I try to do that every day, hit my knees and ask that resentment, that obsession to be taken away. And, and it has. God has done that for me um, through nothing I do but, but use that one Simple, simple tool. And then I get to the fourth column. And I don't know why they never tabulated that out here. I I don't know why. But the fourth column is the sneaky one. The fourth column... Referring to our list again, this list I had so much fun making, remember? Putting out of our minds the wrongs others had done. What? (laughs) We resolutely look for our own mistakes. The hell are they talking? Where have we been selfish, dishonest, self-seeking, and frightened? Everywhere. I was always selfish. I was always dishonest. I lied to me, I lied to you. I told a lie when the truth was easy because the lie might have sounded better to me. Self-seeking. What is the self-seeking? Those are the actions that I do. If you piss me off, maybe I let the air out of your tire if it's bad enough. Maybe I just gossip about you. I'm, I'm just creating that soul sickness, right? I'm poisoning myself by doing these things. I'm, I'm doing these self-seeking things to get back at you and I'm hurting me. I'm, I'm hurting my soul. I'm poisoning myself. Toxically, it's awful. Awful lies. Frightened. I've been afraid of everything. You know, I thought I was a big tough guy in a bar. Yeah, with, with 10 shots in me, I'm a tough guy, right? So I get hit and end up on the floor. I'm not a tough guy. <laughs> Though a situation had not been entirely our fault. That's generous, isn't it? <laughs> None of these things are... are are not my fault. These are all entirely my fault. I always start these rolling or I keep it going afterward. We tried to disregard the other person entirely. Where was I to blame? The inventory was mine, not the other man's. You know, when we saw our faults, we listed them. We placed them before us in black and white. We admitted our wrongs honestly and were willing to set these matters straight. Now, as I said before, I was an angry guy. Um... I had a bunch of notebooks. I had hundreds of people I was resentful at and dozens of individual reasons why I was angry at every one of them. And so there was a lot of writing to do. And I think I'm, I'm not a record holder uh, by any means as far as that goes. But I think there's some benefit to being a long list guy. Um, because I, I, I've written these resentments out so many times, and especially this fourth column where I'm looking at my part. Where was I selfish and frightened? And it's, I liken it to a boot camp drill. Everyone's seen the drill parade, beautiful precision marching. They don't go out there and do it once and call it a day. They're out there a lot. They're out there a lot doing it to get it right, to, to be able to, to do this effectively the way it's supposed to be. Now, if I, if I, if I look at this once and, and do this sick prayer one time and expect that to work, eh, maybe, maybe not. I'm pretty undisciplined, so probably not. If you pound it into my head five or 600 times, I'm a little more likely to learn it. And that was my experience. You know, I had a long list. It took a long time. I was lazy and undisciplined doing my writing. It took longer than it should have. Um... But the the beauty of it is that I begin to get relief from these tools 
right away. I don't have to get to step 12 to start to feel alive again, to feel whole again, to feel free again. For, again, maybe for the first time ever. Because even before I was drinking, I had these fears and these resentments and angers. I don't know where they came from. For our purposes here in addressing it, it doesn't matter their origins. But I just was always like that. And I didn't know why. And it, again, it doesn't matter. But these, these tools that were given, you know, the, the God of my understanding, that most powerful tool, and that started simply for me. Very, very simply. I didn't know, uh, I had no idea about a, a God of my understanding. I just got on my knees and said, please take these thoughts away and jumped right back up before anybody could see me. But that was enough to affect the beginning. And a little bit of willingness is all it takes to grow that relationship. The second tool, the sick man's prayer, we can start to put this into play right away. And the more we practice with this, the better. If you're doing this work and you've put pen to paper, you're ready to use that tool. And when, when people offend, when, when you start to feel that, I don't know about you guys, I can feel the anger building. I can use that sick man's prayer. And I've shortened it so I can remember it and use it more easily. God help me. It works. It works. Do I do it every time and save myself? No. Nah, no. Nah. Is the percentage getting better? Yeah, yeah. And that's what I shoot for, you know. I'm never going to be perfect. I don't want perfect. There's no end to this. And all I'm trying to do is just be a little better every day. Sometimes I'm a lot better. Sometimes a little better. Sometimes I slip back a little. But I always want to go a little forward. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed with the ability to, to work with guys, some in this room, some from other meetings. And... Uh, and, and my theme for the year, if you will, is going to be use the tools. So if you're, if you're in this room, if, you're, if you've come into AA, even if you haven't started, <clears throat> hopefully someone has, has, has told you about the, the get on your knees and ask God to take those thoughts of drinking away. It doesn't have to be my God or, or anyone's God. It doesn't have to be anything. I had no idea. But I'm begging you to try that if you haven't tried it. And then if you're, if you're to the part where you're starting to do this writing now, God bless you. Stay with it. We need you. We need people to, to get through this process, get recovered, and work with other people because there's a lot of them out there and uh, we need every one of you. And, and, and use that second tool right away. Huge. God help me. This is a sick man. How can I be helpful? Right? I'm not going to be in love with everybody. How can I be kindly and tolerant? Boy, those are great ideas. I never had that before. <laughs> Kindly and tolerant. <coughs> yeah. And, and, you know, every time I'm kindly and tolerant, that grows a little in me, and that soul sickness shrinks a little. So if, if you're here today, I thank you again, and use the tools. <laughs>